Welcome back everyone to Data Science for Everyone. Today we're going to be looking at rolling regression with stats models. Let's get started. So rolling OLS is basically going to apply an OLS model across some fixed windows of observations and then it's going to roll over, it's going to move over uh, piece by piece across that window uh, and across the data set. Now the key parameter um, in this model is going to be the window, okay, which is going to determine the number of observations used for each OLS regression. Now by default, okay, um, it's going to drop all missing values in the window. So, um, so for example, you have um, some uh, stock data, okay, and again, you're missing, for example, the, the weekends or anything else. You're not going to have to fill those in. It's going to drop those NAs for you and it's going to keep on rolling. Um, so let's go on and get started with this. Uh, first off, I Oops, I want to give us a little bit more space here. There we go. So get our standard imports. Import pandas as pd, import numpy as np, import uh, stats models.api as sm, import stat, oh, you know what? Let's do from stats models.regression. dot rolling import rolling OLS. Um, we also want to import pandas data reader as PDR. We also want to grab in here um, our uh, visualization stuff. So import map plot lib dot pi plot as PLT. Import seaborn as SNS, and we also want to do uh, matplotlib inline. Um, and I think we're going to be good here. So we're going to be using um, this uh, uh, pandas data reader to actually be importing in uh, some data. So from the Fama French. Uh, model okay so let's do our factors is going to be pdr dot get data uh, from the fama french uh, and so that would be f dot f underscore research data factors um, let's do our uh, start date is going to be uh, one, one, um, 1926, I believe. One, one, 1926. Uh, and we want the first observation on that one. And then we'll do the same thing. Uh, but here we're going to do um, industries. PDR dot get data fama French. And we want the 10 industry portfolios. And again, we have it start as 1, 1, 19, 26. Okay, let's run those. Whoop, and which one didn't it like? Uh, Oh, whoops. Research. There we go. Hmm. Hmm, 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 hmm. Um, let me double check and see what the new... Oh, whoops. It's French. French. Fama French, oh, and that. There we go. Okay, sorry about that, guys. Uh, so we use this to get um, this from Ken French's website. Um, so this is um, the three uh, Fama French factors, as well as the ten industry portfolios data. And again, this is from uh, 1926. Now, the first model that we're going to do is a rolling version of the CAPM, and that uh, regresses the excess return of technology sector firms on the excess return of the market. Okay, now the window we're going to use is a 60-month 
Uh, and so the results are going to um, are available after the first 60 month window. OK, um, and the first uh, 59 window minus one estimates are going to be all in A's. OK, so let's do our endogenous variables is our industries dot H I tech uh, minus our factors dot R F dot values. Then we'll do our exogenous is going to be SM dot add constant in here and our factors is our market, uh, our F, our rolls is going to be our rolling, and it's our rolling OLS is what that actually is for. Rolling OLS uh, is our endogenous with our exogenous, uh, and our window, as we said, is going to be 60. And then our results. And are we on our parameters is equal to roll res dot params. Um, and then let me show actually, let's do uh, params dot head and then param, let's do print params dot head so you can see that they've been turned into NAs. And then we'll do um, print params dot tail. What didn't you like? Uh, industries dot high tech. Did it turn it into? Hmm. All right. So they changed up the way that they've been. Oh, okay. That's why we need this zero here. There we go. Okay. So uh, what action we needed here is it's downloading a, a kind of a data packet here. Um, in this uh, in this line here, and if you don't grab that first zero, it's not going to actually grab the data frame itself. It's going to grab a kind of a dictionary of of data and information. So make sure you want to grab that zero that zero target. So here you can see that the first sixty are going to be turned into NA or fifty nine minus one, and then here you're going to see later on we actually have constant with our market values. Um, hmm, 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 hmm. All right, so now let's go on and actually plot out our recursive plot uh, with our 95% confidence interval. Um, and our alpha will be false here because uh, we want to admit the constant column um, if it's going to be present. So let's do um, rrs.plot recursive coefficient uh, variables. Here is going to be our our market RF, our figure size in here, we want this to be a little bit long and we want it to be kind of short. Hmm. There we go, just need to re, uh, reconfigure our spelling. So here we can see that we have our uh, market RF. Now next um, model is going to be expanded. Okay, we want to include all three factors. Right now we only have uh, one factor in here. So we want uh, the excess market, uh, the size factor, and uh, the value factor is what we're also going to add in. So let's go on and add those in, and then we'll actually see here how, how they can all kind of compare. So um, our exogenous uh, variables in here, as we said, are going to be the excess market. Uh, we want also uh, the size factor, and we also want in here the value factor. So uh, add constant in here and we want our factors uh, to be our exog variables. Then we want in here our rolling OLS is going to be rolling OLS with our endogenous, our exogenous, our window is going to be our 60. Um, our results in here will be uh, rolling OLS fit and then we want to actually go on and uh, take a look at our 
plot or recursive. Um, variables is equal to our exogenous variables. Uh, figure size. Again, we want this to be kind of long and skinny. Oh, you know what? We don't want it long and skinny. We want it long and long uh, because it's going to be three plots here. Uh, is that going to be good in size? Okay. So now we can actually see each of our rolling OLS in time. Um, and again, we can see that these look uh, pretty good. Everything is within uh, our um, upper and lower bounds. Okay, um, we have, yeah, everything looks looks pretty good here. Again, it looks a little wonky when we start looking at areas like this um, and whatnot. Um, but I'm going to leave this here. If you guys like this, please comment, subscribe, and hit that like button, and I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.